We're here for Motorboats Monthly at the Southampton Boat Show, looking at some of the latest models here at the show today. This is Regal's latest, it's a 1900 ES. It's a 19 foot boat, but it's a bit wider than you normally get on a boat of this size, and because of that, there's quite a lot of space in it. There's what they've called the stadium seating that goes around here, and then there's a backrest here that flips over so you can have that as forward seating as well. Helm over here, and then a walk through to your bow rider section. They're putting the 4.3 litre Mercruiser in this one, and at this size of boat, I expect that would go very, very well. Cornish Crabber are a British company that are well known for their traditional little sailing boats, but they've recently branched out into the motorboat sector with this. It's based on their Cornish Shrimper. It uses the hull of that boat, but with a new top on it, and it's called the Cornish Clam. Now on this boat, what they've done is they've put a little twin cylinder Yanmar diesel in. It's got a shaft drive. There's a neat little wheelhouse at the front here, and then there's a double berth under the foredeck. Down to the waterline, they've retained the keels of the Shrimper, so it should give the boat very good directional stability. And the prop is on a shaft and it's encapsulated within a skeg, so it should give it good protection as well. This is Princess's brand new 43. Now this replaces their 42, which was a massively popular and important boat for them. So it was really, really crucial that they got this one right. I think they've been very sensible. What they've done is they kept the layout and the basic configuration the same, but they brought it bang up to date. It's slightly longer than fractionally wider, but the big difference is that they built this using the new resin infusion method, and that gives an awful lot more elbow room throughout the whole boat. It's got the huge windows, similar to the Princess 52 that we tested earlier in the year, and it just makes the whole thing feel a lot bigger and a lot airier. Now down here, the galley has got a little bit squarer and a bit larger, and quite cunningly, they've actually found space for a washing machine down in here. The layout downstairs is pretty much the same as it was before. You've got a double berth in the forward cabin and the guest cabin has two singles. Though on this boat, they've got an adaption where you can have them so that they pull together electrically to make a double. What has changed is the heads. You've now got separate shower stalls in those, so it gives a little bit more elbow room in there as well. Out here in the cockpit, they've got two doors on either side now and centralise the seating area here a bit. There's the option of a high-low platform on this one as well and the flybridge has changed quite a bit too. Now on the old Princess 42, what you had was the helm here like this, but then a semi-circular seating area here and a big sunbed on the back. What they've done with this 43 is they've put a huge seating area back here, which makes a lot better use of the space. There's another seating area alongside the helm, and that will convert to a sunbed as well, and they've also found room for a wet bar up here too. Engines are the familiar Volvo Penta D6 or Caterpillar engines, and it retains the shaft drive layout of the previous boat. We tested Fairline's Targa 48 earlier this year. This is the next boat to be spun off that platform. It's the Squadron 48, so it has the same hull, has the same basic layout, but of course it has the flybridge configuration. This of course then is the big difference, the flybridge. Again, you've got this lovely set of Recaro style seats here, nice clear dashboard up ahead of you here, and then there's a interesting little seating area just here with a couple of facing seats and a massive seating area around a table further back. One thing I'm very glad to see they've kept from the Targa 48 is these wonderful Recaro seats. Really comfortable, nice place to enjoy the boat from. The layout here is broadly similar. Um, you've got a nice little seating area alongside the helm here, and then you've got your bigger seating area back there. And downstairs, it's a little bit different. On the boat we tested earlier this year, they had a dinette down here because of course this was all cockpit upstairs. On this one, because your saloon is upstairs, what you've got is you've got the twin bunked cabin here, which augments your forward cabin with a scissor berth, and of course your full beam mid cabin for the owner. The interesting thing to see down here is the woodwork because the boat that we tested earlier in the year was a pre-production boat and that hadn't been finalised. They've gone for this really classy twin tone style here um, and it, it does give the boat a nice rich feeling inside here. Engines are IPS 600. The Targa was doing about 33 knots with those engines so I guess this one's going to be somewhere around the 30. But with a bit of luck we'll get to test this one very soon. This is Sunseeker's new Manhattan 55, which replaces their 53. It's the same basic boat, but they've upgraded it quite significantly. And the first area where that's most obvious is here, where the 53 had a sideboard. This now has seating on this side to match the seating on the other side and make this a much more sociable area. Up on this level, the dinette area remains, but they've made it a lot more contemporary and quite a lot nicer looking. And then we go on down to the galley. 
Down here again the layout stays essentially the same but they've actually opened this galley area out a little bit more. You've got a double VIP cabin forward and another guest cabin over on this side. Another thing you notice here is they're putting much bigger windows in the hull and this is the first area where you get the impression of that. And then as we go back you see a lot more of it in the owner's cabin. Down here in the master cabin, these hull windows are very much in evidence. But the one thing that's really changed with this boat is they've really raised the quality of the fixtures and the fittings. So for example, you've got this lovely leather surfaces on the top of here. There's more fabric in areas like this, and the cheap bendy reading lights have been replaced by these beautiful wall lights. It's really raised the ambience of the whole boat. They've done a really nice job. Up here on the flybridge, they've extended the overhang back across the cockpit a lot further, and that's given quite a bit more seating around this area. They're fitting this boat with a MAN 800 horsepower shaft drive engines, or you can have the CAT C12s, but there's also the option of IPS 900s. Many manufacturers, when they launch a new model, like to talk about it in terms of a little ship. This is Hardy's new 62, and in this case, I think it's entirely justified. This is a perfect example of these fantastic wide side decks with these huge bulwarks here. It really does feel like you're moving around on a proper little ship. Inside, it's all lovely, rich, teep and big windows. But come and have a look at this helm position. Up here at the helm, you've got this fantastic suspended proper captain seat here. Nice traditional wheel and the forward sloping windows that really give it that little ship feel. Down here on the lower level, there's this lovely big galley area here. There's a forward cabin with a double berth in, and there's a small guest cabin with two singles on that side. And then met down here is the owner's cabin. Even down here in the owner's cabin, that little ship feeling continues. No great big hull windows, just the little portholes, and a nice sense of space. This, I think, is particularly spectacular. It's basically like a little utility room or workshop. There's a crew cabin down here, off of here, and then there's a proper walk-in engine room. Look at this, this is virtually full height in here. It's absolutely incredible. This particular boat has got the MAN 1200 horsepower engines. 800s will be standard, but with these in, they reckon it'll do over 30 knots. Up here on the flybridge, there's a massive area at the back here for seating or whatever you want to put here. I love these little vents down here. There's a funnel style support for the radar just here and then you've got your helm position up forward. We've come across the term hybrid boats quite frequently recently and normally they seem to refer to the type of boat that will plane or also travel at low speed. Now this is Sunseeker's take on a hybrid boat but what this is is the first of their new sport yacht series and what we have here is a boat that combines the styling and the sleekness of the Predator but also includes a small flybridge up above. The hull and the layout are exactly the same as the Predator 68, so you've got big saloon area, there's a dining table on that side, and then you have the lower helm over here. Down here on the lower level you've got your galley over on this side, and in fact there's a bulkhead here that comes across where you can enclose this if you want to. VIP cabin is forward for your guests, and then there's another guest cabin over here, and then the owner's cabin is back here. One thing Sunseeker are doing is putting some really big port lights along the side of their top sides now and certainly you get the impression of that in here with these big windows. This cabin, as you'd expect on a 68 footer, it's fantastic, loads of space, a walk-in wardrobe on this side and then its own large ensuite over on the other side. This then is what marks this out as a sport yacht. It's a big flybridge area, but it's kept very low profile. And the idea of that is that you have the facility that you'd expect on the flybridge, your bar, your seating area, your helm, but it doesn't have the look of a flybridge boat. It keeps a low profile styling of the Predator. Mm -hmm.